Right, for my next video, I have uh, decided to do a, a video um, to uh, sort of describe really uh, from a technical perspective about how you uh, go about uh, looking at uh, performing a pad hack. I'll say that slowly because if you say it quickly, padak, padaks, padak. It sounds like some kind of fatal disease or something. It's not. Um, it's a process that you can go through to to enable a arcade uh, machine to be compatible with a controller from a console, uh, for instance, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, Dreamcast, whatever. It, it, it's the same principle. Um, because if you've got an arcade machine and you want to run a, a console through it, um, and the best way of doing that is to do some form of, of, um, of hacking of a, a console pad to wire it effectively into your control panel on your arcade machine. It's quite a, quite a common sort of process that people tend to go through if they want to use their arcade machine. Um, although I suspect that this video uh, may be of help to others, it's sp specifically in response to, uh, to Ori from Japan. So you can blame him for this. Um, he's been giving me verbal diarrhea for the past uh, week or so, um, uh, telling me I've got to get a video up to basically show him or give him some enlightenment on on actually how to go through this process. So, um, so blame him, blame him. Um, right, first of all, to get something out of the way, don't blame me for the trousers that you can see hanging up uh, behind me. Uh, they're not mine, they're uh, my missus's uh, trousers. So, you know, I don't wear things like that, please. Um, so back to the serious uh, conversation about, about pad hacks. Um, I thought what I'd do is because I haven't actually got a a specific process to go through to show you step by step because I've done all my pad hacking. So there's no, I, I can't show you that. But what I will show you is uh, basically the principles behind it. Um, yeah you know, the connection methods that I've got and, and actually how I've approached it, which is slightly different to how some people approach it, but the principles are the same. Um, a very important uh, website, uh, internet uh, resource, that is really good around how to hack a pad and actually what points on the pad PCB to wire off is a, a website called Slagcoin. Um, Christ knows why they called it Slagcoin, but I'll put the I'll put the link to the website in the in the description of this video. Um, that's got a a massive raft of information on there about um, uh, various different types of of pad um, uh, configurations as regards to different versions, different makes, and and actually ones that are better than others for actually performing a pad hack on. Um, it, it, I, I won't go into the technicalities of that, uh, read the website, there's a lot of great information on there. Um, uh, but like I said, some pads are better than others and it does describe on there and tell you certain uh, model types of ones that you really want to go for to be honest. So it's a vital bit of information really for this process of actually pad hacking. I'm going to cut now straight to actually showing you uh, what I've done on, on a couple of my arcade cabinets. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, speak to you again soon. Right then, guys and girls, um, here we have one of my uh, Sega Naomi cabinets. Uh, this is the sit down version. I thought I'd do it this because it's a bit easier for me to actually sit here and do stuff rather than standing up. Um, so we've got the control panel. Uh, you've all seen this. Um, and I'm sure you're familiar with these types of control panels on arcade cabs. So if I, if I actually open the control panel up and I've got the guts uh, sort of inside, um, I'm not going to go through everything here. It, you know, if you look in this type of video, you should already know about, about joysticks and joy pads and an appropriate wiring and so forth and harnesses. This shouldn't be any, any great shock to people that have got um, they've got arcade cabinets, but but effectively the inside of the control panel is you've got um, a, I suppose really the major wiring which is the looms 
to actually go to the control panels themselves and and you can see here I've got distinctly I've got two separate looms here I've got this one which is actually going to the right hand sorry going to the left hand side and this one here is going to the right hand side now this actual cabinet because it's a Sega Naomi it is wired for a wiring convision Ugh, get me words out it is wired for a wiring configuration called uh, JVS so this is somewhat different to a a normal run-of-the-mill sort of jammer cabinet now if I want to actually connect a, a jammer PCB to this cabinet I run a, a jammer to JVS or JVS to jammer whichever way you want to put it uh, converter um, so that works as regards to actually uh, being able to connect a jammer PCB to a Sega Naomi which is a JVS type of cabinet I just thought I'd mention that but I don't want that to actually blur what I'm going on about because I because like I said the principles are the same so uh, we can see these connector blocks here and these are actually called amp uh, connectors A M P and I've got one for left and right and this one down here is actually for the kick harness so that is for the extra buttons for uh, games like Street Fighter etc you know when you've got six buttons in effect so what I've actually done is is well what you can do uh, what you can do if you wish to and actually many people do this but I couldn't do it at the time because I couldn't find the connection blocks is that what you can do is you can create a new loom to come off these uh, blocks here you know these just unplug and I'll do this and I'll end up never be able to get back on again and they're bloody stiff said the actress to the bishop so <laughs> that's uh, that's come off so what you could do is is as part of the process to create your new loom up to go on to uh, your controller PCB is you could buy basically one of these connectors here and and of course you could plug it straight into there so you can just use that as your as your sort of change over swap over method I've gone for a slightly different approach like I said at the time when I actually created these pad hacks when I started doing them I couldn't get hold of these connectors um, so what I decided to do was uh, to actually keep the main connectors there and always connected and actually create myself uh, my own connection type uh, which is what you can see there hopefully you've seen that in the video um, and this is actually a, a PC ATX uh, power connector uh, male and female so I've effectively cut the wires here to go to the joystick and the and the buttons and made up my own uh, connection block and that was a fairly straightforward process to do sorry to do so of course I can split those apart just like that and what I do now as part of the process for me to actually connect in a pad hack onto this control panel obviously that's going to my control panel there so that's what I want to connect onto now onto my onto my pad onto my hacked pad <laughs> um, sounds a bit better than pad hack doesn't it um, so again just to quickly go over the actual pad hack itself and again I'm not going to go into a mammoth amount of detail only to show the principles of what I've done here's one I prepared earlier and and this is actually a 360 pad that's been hacked so uh, you've got your normal PCB here sorry trying to get this sort of in the center of the camera so you can see it that's the PCB there from the 360 controller and you've got this wire coming off at the side which goes to your normal uh, sort of PS2 USB uh, type uh, not PS2 uh, USB type uh, plug now that obviously goes straight into my uh, 360 as this it uh, would do if it was a wired controller I've actually uh, put some holes down here in the bottom of the control panel so I can actually drop this wire down so I'll do that now so I'll pull the wire down that's coming out the bottom of the control panel and I can actually plug that straight into my um, I'll put that in straight into my Xbox 360 so uh, what I've effectively done is uh, mirrored what I've done on my main wiring loom here and I've uh, created a loom on the uh, controller PCB and again if you go into slag coin it will tell you exactly how to how to effectively solder 
um, uh, on the correct point and you could probably just see let's just bring it to the camera there that's probably better is you've got a lot of hot glue points on there and that's basically where I've soldered on to so what you're effectively doing as part of the hacking process is that you are taking wires off of the directional pad um, uh, which is there I think I think that's the directional pad No, it's not directional pad, they're the buttons. Sorry, it goes around that way. Get it the right way around, Sean. So, so you actually take, uh, take wires off the directional pad and you take them off the appropriate buttons that you want to use as well. And I've then wired those into another uh, ATX connector, which is the opposite to the one that I've got on my, on my uh, wiring loom that goes to uh, my joystick and the buttons. So of course, what I can do, is just plug them together just like that job done jobs are good and as they say and I can lay that down there and then I can close that up like that so that that in principle is actually what I've done that's the approach I've taken and um, and some people have 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 different approaches to this as regards to doing that connection type. That's pretty common for people to do something like this, but they can use, you know, D sub 15 connectors and, and all a, a whole magnitude of different type of connection methods. But um, I decided these they're they're readily available, you know, as are D sub 15 uh, sockets and plugs to be honest. But but yeah, so. So of course what I do is when I want to swap in and out a pad is effectively open the control panel, I'll unplug this from the main wiring loom, uh, connect my new PCB in there, job done. And it's, it, it does make a massive difference in my opinion to the actual um, uh, playing nature of a game. You think about something like, I, I mean a topic of conversation for me um, uh, normally is around Xbox 360 shooters so, and predominantly that's what I use my uh, my cabinets for as regards to a connection with a console uh, 360 is the favorite really but I've done it with a PlayStation 2 controller um, in fact I've probably got one under here oh Jesus I'm going to pull all that out so again this is slightly neater one this one because it's um, the actual pad PCB looks better but this is a PlayStation uh, 2 pad so exactly the same principle that's the that's the basic PCB I've hot glued off all the appropriate points um, I've obviously got this end here uh, which plugs straight into the PlayStation 2 uh, so again I'll drop that through the hole in the control panel and again I've wired a, a similar ATX power um, a connector off there so again that just plugs straight into the loom that I've just shown you that goes straight to the control panel so you know the principle is exactly the same um, I've actually got a set of pad hacks for a Dreamcast which actually use the uh, the proper amp connectors so they go straight out to there so they don't do this kind of method so effectively what I'll do for that is is unplug any any pad that I've got connected I'll reconnect the normal uh, control panel method. So obviously when I've got it connected like this, I can use the normal JVS wiring um, uh, with a Naomi game. I can then uh, also use it as regards to interfacing with, with my JAMA converter uh, for normal RK PCB. So it is, it is multifunctional really in that respect. But yeah, so the amp uh, connectors I've actually got on, on a Dreamcast pad hack um, a setup so they just plug straight into there so I'll just unplug that and put the DC one in for that drop the cables down uh, the side here uh, job done I suppose because I haven't gone into that much technicalities of actually how to do the pad hack itself but again if you go into slag coin it's got all the information you need guys that's where I got all my knowledge from so so there's no reason why you guys can't do the same um, hope you enjoyed the video guys and I'll speak to you again soon